For Be Quiet's high-end lineup of coolers called the Dark Rock series, we have the really fat ones and the little bit less fat ones. As you might expect, the fat ones come with the biggest headroom in, in raw performance, while the little bit less fat ones transform that heatroom into something that resembles RAM compatibility. However, although the little bit less fat one does not obstruct your RAM like a brick wall, its fan is still protruding over the first RAM slot, making you either decide between using the shameful non-RGB RAM or clipping the fan a little bit higher and thus making the overall cooler higher than its advertised 159mm height. But what if you don't want to go over 159mm height and you don't want to be bullied into settling for that pathetic low profile memory? Well fear no more because Be Quiet is here to save you from your hopeless fate with that dark rock slim, a cooler compact enough to fit into most cases while maintaining a 100% RAM compatibility without stretching that height and and to top it all off, the cooler still looks big and manly enough to not create any new reasons for you to get bullied. Exciting. So this is the new Dark Rock Slim and very accordingly to its own name, it, this thing is uh, slim. It's, it's really slim. While it's still exactly as high as the Dark Rock 4 at 159.4 mm, the heatsink of this thin boy measures only 50 mm in thickness and 72 if we have the fan installed. At the bottom of the cooler, we've got Got the usual Be Quiet style copper nickel plated base which already prepares us for that hideous mounting bridge that is about to make another appearance. But on the bright side we've got heat pipes, four to be exact. Also covered in some black ceramic coating, those four heat pipes are transporting the heat up the cooler until it reaches the upper plate that doesn't have a, a real purpose other than it, it looks nice. And maybe some sort of passive heat dissipation, I mean it's still metal, it's still there, maybe it does something. The fan in use is one of Be Quiet's tried and tested Silent Wing 3 120mm PVM. As the name suggests, it, it is using a PVM header, I mean who, who would have thought that. But it is also spinning at up to 1500 rpm while it's pushing I don't know how much CFM at nobody told me millimeters of H2O. Great. Although there are no numbers on the website, manual or even on the box, it's pretty easy to make a, a very good estimate as the regular Silent Wing 120mm PVM is spinning at only 50 rpm less. And those fans are pushing about 50 CFM at 1.79mm of H2O and if we now add like 5% to that we should be where this fan is at. As for the compatibility, we've got coverage for pretty much everything. LGA 1700, 1200, 2066, 2011-3 and every 1150 on Team Blue. And on the red team we've got AM4 because that's pretty much the only thing that is still relevant, but do keep in mind that AM5 is said to be backwards compatible, so we should also be good there. Inside the standard Be Quiet Dark Rock style box, you will find exactly what you would expect. The cooler itself, as well as an army of installation hardware, a syringe of thermal paste and an additional set of fan clips in case you want to install another fan to this cooler and create your own little freaking monster. Before we get to the important part like performance or noise, let's see if the mounting bridge of this Dark Rock Slim is able to break the record and create more than three aneurysms in, in a single session. On LGA 1150, 12 and 1700, take the provided Intel backplate, shove the Intel screws through it and keep them in place using the rubber pieces. Just make sure to shove them through the correct hole, older ones for 1700 and inner ones for everything else. From here, position the backplate behind the mother about and take those weird ass double sided nuts and screw them down. Then we are going to need the retention brackets, but make sure to reuse the right ones as LGA 1700 got its separate pair. After positioning them with the ends pointing inwards, we can screw them down using those tiny whiny screws. Over on AMD's side, stuff is about to get a bit easier. Here we just need to remove the pre-installed retention brackets, replace them with some new spacers, position the AMD mounting brackets in an inwards pointing position on top and screw it down. From here, splash some of that thermal paste on top of your CPU, position the central mounting bridge in the center of the cooler and, and when it sits flush and oh, it's, this is a nightmare, I hate this step, but 
After a bit of fiddling, it will be on top of your CPU, and yes, I believe that Be Quiet should pre-attach the damn mounting bridge to the cooler, it just makes so much sense. After one or two close attempts followed by a mental breakdown, we can finally screw this thing down and mount the fact back onto the heatsink. Ignoring the central mounting bridge that I just hope that it disappears for good, Let's finally look at the benchmarks. While letting the fan spin at its max 1500 RPM, the Be Quiet Dark Rock Slim manages to keep the 3900X at 55 degrees C above ambient. This places it just 2 degrees behind the similarly sized Arctic Freezer 34 eSports, but more shockingly, the way bigger Dark Rock 4 got the same 2 degrees C difference. So compared to the same brand's bigger counterpart, the Dark Rock Slim actually performs pretty respectable. But Be Quiet and especially the Dark Rock line are not that much about max performance, but their strength is more in terms of noise. And the noise to performance graph is showing exactly that. While it's definitely true that the Dark Rock Slim did not manage to outperform any of the now visible coolers, it did beat most of them in its own class. To put things into perspective, compared to a Dark Rock 4, the Slim version is not only significantly can be thinner, but it is also shorter. And to top it all off, the fan is just 120mm in diagonal, while the Dark Rock 4 uses a 135mm fan. And all of those differences do contribute to the fact that the Slim cannot outperform any other Dark Rock, but that's okay. But as soon as you lower the speed of the Dark Rock 4 and equalize them in performance, the Slim absolutely annihilates it. In fact, as soon as the target temperature is below 55 degrees C above ambient, neither the Freezer 34 single or duo nor the new Noctua NH D12L or whatever else I was able to find, nothing actually beats it. In, in fact, my dB meter is, is not really able to pick up the sound at all. This thing was so quiet, it basically hit noise floor immediately. So what was good and what was bad? Quality-wise, it's still a dark rock. It's sturdy, the fan doesn't look like it's falling apart, and the heatsink can double as a brick if you really needed to. For the design, it's an up-to-you thing. You may like the minimalistic black design that Be Quiet is always going for, or you don't, that's really up to you. I can only say that the cooler as, as a whole does give you a premium feeling uh, like, like look and, and it feels good. On the compatibility side, however, the Dark Rock Slim can score many points. Although it shares a similar height of 159mm with its bigger Dark Rock 4 counterpart, the Dark Rock 4 requires you to enlarge its height in case that you want to install RAM which, which got that RGB thing going on. On the Slim, on the other hand, no matter what you do on the RAM side, it just doesn't protrude it so nobody cares and you can do whatever you want. That being said, there is also something I cannot really wrap my head around. Sure, I get why they removed as much heatsink as necessary to get the fan behind the RAM stick, but why did they remove any heatsink in the back? Isn't there like a ton of space like behind the cooler until you protrude over the VRM heatsink? Wouldn't it make sense to leave that in there as it never obstructs anything anyway? And and wouldn't that like give you some sort of headroom? I don't know, maybe the fan wouldn't just be would wouldn't be strong enough to push it through then, but I mean it's it's a good fan, but I, I don't really get it. Considering the, the tiny size of this thing, it performed a heck of a lot better than I initially expected. So to recommend or not to recommend? Well, considering that you do not have the same headroom as, for example, on a Dark Rock 4 or Dark Rock Pro 4, I would still recommend the cooler based on all of the other positive aspects and, and the very good noise to performance ratio for things like a 12600K, a 5600K, and those like mid tier CPUs. That would be like the sweet spot on, on something like this where you do not need to, you know, um, make that thing ramp up all the way through just to keep that thing cool. If you have something like a 5700X, a 12700K, probably you should go one class higher at a Dark Rock 4. 
But okay, this should be it for the Be Quiet Dark Rock Slim. At this point, a huge thank you to Be Quiet for sending it over. And if you want to keep watching, have a look at our take on the Dark Rock 4. That one turned out to be a tiny bit louder, but therefore with quite a lot more of headroom. On a side note, we now have channel membership. So if you are looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's pretty much the best way to go. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to equip me with nice and protective armor for the next round of crypto infused price inflation. That way I can already knife battle a few adult scalpers so that you can concentrate on the 12 year olds using daddy's credit card. Anyway, thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.